What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I want to quickly summarize all the properties of real numbers for you, okay? So let's start with the commutative property of addition. So the commutative property of addition just says if A and B are real numbers, then A plus B is equal to B plus A. Now, all this is saying is if all you're doing is adding up numbers, doesn't matter if they're positive or negative. If all you're doing is adding them up, you can move them around. Okay, because if I had something like 3 plus 5, that's equal to 8, right? But what if I switched these around and did 5 plus 3? Well, that's still equal to 8. Okay, so now let's do the commutative property of multiplication. So here it says A times B is equal to B times A. Okay, so similarly, if all you're doing is multiplying numbers together, doesn't matter if they're positive or negative, you can move numbers around and you'll still get the same answer. Okay, so if I had... 2 times 5, that's equal to 10, right? What if I had 5 times 2? Well, that's still equal to 10. Okay, so that's the commutative property. Now let's move on to the associative property. So the associative property, the formula for it is right here. So it says a plus b in parentheses plus c is equal to a plus and then b plus c in parentheses. So you can see it switched it, right? So on here it was around a plus b and then here it put it around b plus c. So this is just saying that if all you're doing is adding numbers together, you can move the parentheses around and you'll still get the same answer. And again, this works with positive or negative numbers. Okay, so for example, if I had something like 3 plus 5 plus negative 2, and I put the parentheses around the 3 and the 5. Okay, so 3 plus 5 in the parentheses would simplify to 8, and then we have this plus negative 2 part, so 8 plus negative 2 is equal to positive 6, right? But if we still have this same problem right here, 3 plus 5 plus negative 2, and instead I put the parentheses around the 5 plus the negative 2 part, it wouldn't matter. I'd still get the same answer, okay? Because, so if we did this, 5 plus negative 2, that's equal to positive 3, right? And then if we bring down this 3 plus part, so then we have 3 plus 3 which again is equal to six, okay? So you get the same answer either way. Okay, so that's the associative property of addition. Now let's do of multiplication, okay? So this one says if you're just multiplying a bunch of numbers together, it doesn't matter where you have the parentheses. So here it's around A times B and here it's around B times C, okay? If all you're doing is multiplying numbers together, the placement of your parentheses will not affect your answer. You'll still get the same answer. So if I had something like 4 times negative 1 times 6, and I put the parentheses around the 4 and the negative 1 here, that's still going to be the same thing. It's going to be equal to 4 times negative 1 times 6 if I simply move the parentheses to right there. Okay, so simplifying this left side first, you always start with what's in your parentheses, right? So 4 times negative 1 is equal to negative 4, and then we're multiplying by 6. Okay, so negative 4 times 6 is equal to negative 24. Okay, and you'll see it's the exact same thing on this side. So simplifying what's in our parentheses, negative 1 times 6 is equal to negative 6, right? And then we're multiplying by 4 out here. So 4 times negative 6, again, is equal to negative 24. Okay, so now let's move on to the identity property. Now, the identity property of addition says whenever you add 0 to a number, it doesn't change the answer, okay? It's pretty straightforward, right? So if you had 5 and you added 0 to it, well, your answer would still be 5, okay? Or if you had something like 0 plus... 7x cubed, well then your answer would simply be 7x cubed, right? Adding 0 to a number doesn't change it whatsoever. So that's why 0 is known as the additive identity. When you add 0, it doesn't change the value. Now let's move on to the multiplication. So the identity property of multiplication says when you have a number and you multiply it by 1, it doesn't change the answer. You still just have that number. So again, if you had 5 times 1, well, your answer would just be 5, right? Or if you had something like 
negative 6n squared over 5, and you multiplied it by 1. It won't change your answer, right? You'll still just have negative 6n squared over 5. Okay, so whenever you multiply by 1, it doesn't change your answer, right? So that's why 1 is known as the multiplicative identity. Well, that's a mouthful, right? Multiplicative. Now, let's move on to the inverse property. So the inverse property says when you have a number and you add the negative or the opposite of it, your answer is zero. Okay, so if you had something like the number five, what would be the opposite of five? Well, it would be negative five, right? So if you add those two together, your answer would be zero. Okay, but what if you had something like negative 2.8? What would be the opposite of negative 2.8? It would be positive 2.8, right? So it'd be positive 2.8. Okay, so if you add those two together, again, your answer would be zero. Okay, so now let's move on to multiplication. So here it says when you have a number and you multiply by the reciprocal, your answer is one. So for example, if you had the number five, what would be the reciprocal of five? Well, maybe it's not so obvious right now because five is not in a fraction form, right? But if I wanted to write this as a fraction, I could simply just put it over one, right? So what is the reciprocal of five over one? Well, that would be one over five, right? All you have to do is flip the fraction, okay? So when you have a number and you multiply by the reciprocal, your answer would be one, okay? And that's pretty straightforward here, right? Because if we wanted to, we could solve this. How do you multiply two fractions together? Well, you just multiply straight across, right? So on the top, we would have five times one, which is five, and that'd be over the bottom, which would be one times five, which is five also, right? So five over five is equal to one. Okay, or another example would be, what if I had negative three? Well, again, the inverse would be the same thing as the reciprocal, okay? So here I would multiply one over negative three, okay? And Whenever you multiply by the reciprocal, your answer again is one. And it works the same way with variables. So if I had four X squared, well, the reciprocal of this would be one over four X squared, okay? And again, if you multiply these together, your answer would again be one. Okay, now just a couple more properties. So the next one is gonna be the distributive property. So it says if A, B, and C are real numbers, then a times b plus c in parentheses is equal to a times b plus a times c. Okay, so if we had a problem like this, three times and in parentheses we'll put five plus two. Okay, so the distributive property says this number out here, you can multiply it by this first number and multiply it by this second number and then just add them together. Okay, so we're gonna do three times five, right, three times five, and we're gonna do three times two, three times two, and then we're just gonna add these together, okay? So three times five is equal to 15, and then here, three times two is equal to six. So now let's bring down this plus sign. So 15 plus six is equal to 21. Okay, now lastly, we have the properties of zero. So there's basically two kinds, there's, this one right here, which is multiplication, so zero property of multiplication, and then this one would be the zero property of division. Okay, so first of all, the zero property of multiplication says, whenever you multiply a number by zero, your answer is always zero. So you probably already knew that, but just to be clear, so if we had something like five times zero, your answer would be zero, okay? If you had 17x, cubed y squared over negative 64 times zero, again, your answer would be zero, okay? Anything times zero, zero. So easy enough, right? Now, the zero property of division says zero divided by any number is equal to zero, okay? But any number divided by zero is undefined, okay? So let me give you a couple examples. So if we had zero over seven. This is the same thing as zero divided by seven, right? So your answer would just be zero, okay? Or if you had zero divided by nine n squared, well then again, your answer would be zero, 
okay? Now, if I flipped these problems, then your answer would be undefined, okay? So, for example, if I flip this one, if I had 7 divided by 0, your answer would be undefined, and I'm just abbreviating here, undefined, okay? Or again, if I had this other problem backwards, 9n squared divided by 0, well, then my answer would, once again, be undefined. Okay, what if you had 0 over 0? What would your answer be? Would it be 0 or would it be undefined? Well, in this case, it'd actually be undefined. Okay, because you can never have a 0 in the denominator. That's a big, big no-no. So, if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful, so definitely check those out, and I'll see you there.